Hey YouTube, it's Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, here with another electronic drum video. Today, we're going to be talking about recording electronic drums, and more specifically, recording the Roland TD-17 drum module. Now, the Roland TD-17 is without a doubt probably the best drum module you can get for under $1,000. It sounds really, really good. Um, the sounds in there are on par with even like the TD-50, which is the top of the line Roland drum module and this one costs about $600 brand new compared to the $3,000 the TD-50 costs. Now, how can they make a drum module like this so cheap is by taking away some of the features that are in some of the flagship models, such as the TD-27 and the TD-50. For example, when I picked up my TD-17, I was upgrading from a TD-8, which is a much, much older Roland drum module, and it was also a mid-range module. However, the TD-8, even though it was older and the sounds were a little more dated sounding than the TD-17, after I picked up my TD-17, I found myself missing some of the features that the TD-8 had. Uh, mainly the fact that it had multiple outputs so I could record more than two outputs at the same time. Now on the TD-8 it actually had four different outputs so I could basically split up my drums to kick, snare, and then I would group the toms and the cymbals to two stereo overheads. Now on even higher end drum modules like the TD-50 and the TD-27, you can actually send every single drum out through USB digitally to your digital audio workstation. The TD-27 has the ability to send each individual drum on a separate channel so you can run that into your digital audio workstation and have every drum on a separate channel. Now, this might be overkill for some situations. Uh, if you really want to get into fine tuning your mix, that could be really useful, but you don't always need to do it that much. Now, the TD-17 only has a stereo output, either physical analog quarter inch stereo outputs or a digital USB stereo output. Now, for a lot of situations, that USB uh, digital output will sound just fine. In fact, I used that method of recording on my latest video with Is That Donnie, where I thought it sounded great, and I just used the stereo digital output. However, I still was thinking, you know, boy, I would like to have more outputs and have a little bit more control. Say if I wanted to put a special EQ on the snare or something or the kick drum just to make it stand out in a particular song, uh, I wanted that flexibility. So I was like, there's gotta be some kind of way to do this on the TD-17. So fortunately, there actually is. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. It's a little bit, uh, I, you know, it's not difficult, but it's just a little more time consuming than it would be if you were doing this on a TD-27. You could just turn it on and plug it in you know, and have all the channels sending out separately by themselves. But, you know, with a couple extra steps, you actually can get individual tracks from the sounds of the TD-17 into your DAW. Now, I think this would probably work on a TD-07 as well. I haven't actually played with one of those, but probably you could use the same concepts uh, on the TD-07 to do this same exact thing. So, so I'm going to describe the overview of the process of this, and then we'll get into the details of how to do it. But before we do, Check out my music. You can follow me on Spotify and Apple Music. There's links down below. Demonic Sweaters is my main project. I also have other projects like Manasota and Hums and now Is That Donnie. There's also my Bandcamp page, which is down below as well. So make sure to follow me on all of those pages if you like. And now let's go ahead and get on with the video. Also, before you say it, I know a lot of you out there are thinking it. Why not just use MIDI and use Easy Drummer or Superior Drummer or something like that? Well, because not everybody thinks that Superior Drummer or Easy Drummer sounds better than their drum module. I know a lot of people do, but a lot of people don't too. Now really a lot of people who spend six or $700 on a drum module would rather use the sounds that are in that drum module. Now, if I were still playing an Alesis Nitro or something like that, then yes, I would agree. Let's use Easy Drummer or Superior Drummer, but Honestly, I think the sounds in the TD-7 sound much better than the sounds in Easy Drummer. Superior Drummer is more debatable, but definitely better than Easy Drummer, so that's why. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing it through software too if you want to go that route, but this is for the people that want to use the sounds in their drum module. So anyway, now as I was saying before, the TD-17 only has two stereo audio outputs as well as a USB connection. There is a MIDI output, but we're not going to be using that in this tutorial because it really isn't needed in this situation. Uh, what we're going to be using is actually the two stereo outputs in conjunction with the USB MIDI output. Now the TD-17 and the TD-07 have 
basically, well actually every role and module has two different driver modes you can set your USB uh, function to. One of them is generic mode, which allows you to use USB as MIDI, and the other one is vendor mode. Vendor mode turns the USB device into an audio device on the Roland module. However, to do what we're doing here, we're going to need to have the USB set to generic because we're going to be using the USB for MIDI input and output. In addition to that, we're going to be using the physical audio outputs. So what we're going to need is a USB cable, which is just your standard printer type USB cable. And then we're going to need either one or two quarter inch cables to run from your drum module to your audio interface. And that's another thing you're going to need is a USB audio interface or firewire or some type of high end audio interface to your computer to really make this work the best way possible. And I assume that if you're watching this tutorial, you already have one of those interfaces. But if you don't, I'll post a couple links down below uh, to all of this stuff that you can pick up if you need it. So let's go ahead and show you all the hookups first and all the settings need to change. And then we'll get into the details as to how this is actually going to work. Okay, so first let's talk about what settings you need to have configured in the TD-17 module or in the TD-07. I'm just going to not say TD-07 anymore because if you're using that, I don't have one to show you exactly, but it's going to be very similar. So let's talk about the TD-17. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to Setup first and then go down to USB. And then just make sure under driver mode that it is set to generic. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. But if you can't, it just says USB driver mode generic. Uh, the other one would be vendor, but that's not what we want. We want generic because we're going to be using USB for MIDI. All right, now second, we're just going to take our USB cable, which is a standard printer type cable. I'm using this one from Amazon Basics right here. And then I'm just going to plug it into the USB connection on the drum module. Then I have this very nice dual quarter inch mono cable. Well, it's actually a stereo cable because it's two monos, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm going to plug that into the left and right output of the TD-17, like so. And then I'll show you where they're hooked up to my computer. Okay, so here, as you can see, I just have left and right input into my uh, USB audio interface here. And that's going to be recording the audio as we're recording uh, the drums. Now, the audio is actually going to be kind of like a scratch track. Uh, but we're going to get to that here in a little bit. Okay, now here is the big secret. So what I did here, you'll notice we're on a patch called Draw Me. This is actually a custom patch that I made. And this is just a, you know, a drum sound that I came up with that I like. You can use a standard drum sound if you want, or preset, I mean. Uh, but I'm using one of my own right here. However, if I go here up a little higher to Kits 100 and down, you'll notice something else. Here on uh, kit number 100, we have Draw Me Kick. And then here we have Draw Me Snare. Here we have Draw Me Toms. Here we have Draw Me Cymbals. So what I did is I went in and I created copies of my Draw Me patch with everything but those drums turned all the way down. So first off, what I would do is actually make a copy of the patch that I want to use. So we're gonna go here to other, and then we go to copy, and then we just copy that patch to the slot where we wanna put it. So 96 is empty right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy it to there. So then just press execute, and then enter to execute. Now once it is copied, I can start changing this patch uh, to basically be whichever drum this one is going to be in the mix. Now, this will all make more sense here in a little bit because essentially what we're doing is we're going to record MIDI and audio simultaneously into the DAW, and then we're going to go back and play our recording as many times as we have drum tracks to record each individual drum. So now I could just go in here to level, and I can hit the drums that I want to mute, and I just turn them all the way down. And then I leave whichever drum I want this to be all the way up. For example, if this one's going to be kick, I would just hit my snare, turn it all the way down. As far as it goes to where it's just muted. And it takes a little bit of time, but I just do this to every single one, except for the kick drum.
And then once I get done with that, I can name this. Let's go ahead and name it. So we go to name and then then we can say draw me kick I'll just say K because I already have I actually already have it but I'm just going to show you I'll do this one K too actually K is good enough because <laughs> I'm not even going to use it I already have one set up but anyway I think you get the idea so once that's done you just move on to the next one and you do all the drums that you want to have on individual channels as basically solo drum presets in the module. Okay, so in case you're confused about what we're actually doing here is basically the only reason why we have the two audio outputs plugged in right now before we record is just to record a reference track for a lack of a better phrase. Now the reference track is going to be a stereo recording of the drums, how they sound all together. Now once we have that recorded, we're going to go back into our DAW, send MIDI out through the USB back to the module, and then we're going to set it on each individual patch that we just created. Like for example, I'll start with Draw Me Kick, and then I'll record on a new track in my DAW playing back the MIDI track into the module. So the module plays back just the kick drum part and I just basically re-record doing each track individually. Now you can make this as complicated or as least complicated as you want. You might just want to have kick and snare on individual channels and then group the cymbals and toms together which works pretty good and like for what I did here is I'm just having the kick and snare on separate channels, cymbals on a separate channel, and then toms on a separate channel. Now you could go full-blown and put every single drum on its own channel, but that's going to, going to be a little more time consuming, or actually a lot more time consuming, because every track that you include, you have to make a new preset that is soloed, and then basically re-record that track into your DAW one at a time. But if you're doing just four or five, it's really not that big a deal. You just play back the song five times, record it on a different patch, and then you have all those drum channels there. So I'm actually going to do this now We'll put it into practice and I'll show you everything in Ableton, how I have it configured. And then we'll also do a little bit of drum recording and then I can show you the end result. So anyway, here we go into Ableton. Okay, so here we are inside of Ableton and I just have a old song to hear uh, just you know, on a single track, but this is music here that you're looking at. And that's my backing track is what I'm trying to say. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add an audio track and a MIDI track. So the audio track is going to be recording the two inputs that I plugged in earlier, the physical audio outputs from the module. And then the MIDI track, we're just going to be recording all inputs. Now, if you have a different DAW, you might need to select uh, the TD-17 here. Well, I'll go ahead and do that right now. So now we've designated that the TD-17 MIDI is going to be recording as well. And now I'm just gonna record arm these two tracks and then I'm going to start playing back my song and get a recording level. Okay, so now I just recorded some drums and as you can see, we have a drum track here, stereo drum track, as well as a MIDI channel, MIDI track rather. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn these off record mode now we're gonna add one, two, three, four, what did I do, five? Five more audio tracks, all right? And now this one, we're gonna rename this to kick, then snare, then toms, then, oh, I did one too many, so overheads. So I really only need four. Now we're gonna set all these to input channels one and two because we're still recording from the audio output of the drum module. And now we're gonna go back over to the drum module and set it to the kick drum preset. Okay, so now I have my draw me kick drum patch selected on my module. MIDI input is going in through the TD-17 here. All right, so now what we have to do is make sure our MIDI channel that we just recorded from the module 
goes back to the module to record the new track. So to do that, we're gonna go here to our output and I'm just gonna set this to TD17. So after we've selected our MIDI output as the TD17, we also have to change the channel to channel 10. Now the reason for this is because almost all percussion uh, drum modules use channel 10 as their MIDI input. So now I have the drum module, basically the MIDI that we just recorded from the drum module is going to be going back out to the drum module and we're not gonna be recording onto this channel anymore. Instead, it's going to be sending MIDI to the drum module, which is going to be producing audio, is going to be coming back on our individual channels. And first, we're gonna start off with the kick drum. So let's just do a quick test right here. And we are getting kick drum. So now let's get a level for our kick drum sound. That's looking pretty good. And all we have to do is just go back to the beginning. Let's save here. And we can mute our original uh, drum track. That's really just for reference, this one up here. So let's go ahead and mute that. Now let's go ahead and go back to the beginning and press record. All right, so I just finished recording the kick drum. Now I'm just using the same process to record the snare drum. So I just record on my snare track. I changed my module to my snare patch. And now I'm gonna play back and record once again the MIDI channel going into the drum module and now it'll record the snare track. So you can already hear the bass drum that I recorded before. If I go to my direct input here, you can hear the snare drum recording right there. So all we have to do now is repeat this process for the remaining tracks to get all of our individual drum channels. Okay, so now we have all the tracks recorded individually and we can mute our original MIDI channel. We don't need that anymore. One thing you might be asking is what about latency? Now, if you're using a professional DAW like Ableton, like I'm using here or Pro Tools or Apple Logic, then you really don't have to worry about it because all of these software have built-in latency compensation. So it's all gonna sync up. For example, I'll play it right here. Now you may notice some latency in this video, but that's not related to this recording. That has to do with the screen capture software and the way I have to configure it to work with Ableton. So just to warn you about that, but let me show you the individual tracks. So let's go ahead and play it here. So let's solo our kick. There's our kick drum, snare drum. Go back to this tom part so you guys can hear that. So that's tom, so let's hear that again. Soloed toms, and now here's the cymbals. So everything's on individual tracks. Now, like I said, you could do more than just that if you wanted to, but to me, that's enough. You know, having kick, snare, toms, and cymbals individually is plenty. So then if we wanted to add some reverb to our snare drum or whatever, you know, we have that option. So that's how you do it. So like I said, uh, it's not terribly difficult. It's just a little more time consuming than it would be if you had a module with multiple outputs, but it just goes to show with uh, a little creativity, thinking outside the box, you can still get multi-layered or multi-channel drums out of a drum module that only supports two channels. So anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload new content. And uh, once again, thanks for watching everybody and have a great day.